Hello everyone. My name is Gajendra Deshpande and I'll, I am working as assistant professor in KLS Gupta Institute of Technology India. Today I will be delivering a talk on deceptive security using Python. So these are the contents which we are going to discuss briefly today. Introduction to deception, then two deception tools. One is web trap and second one is demon hunter. Then third is our experiment, how we developed a deception tool. Then finally the conclusion. Let's start with a scenario. So the scenario will help us understand how deception works. Imagine you are passing through an unknown street at midnight and you find that some antisocial elements are following you. To save yourself from them, you start running and look for a safe place to hide. On the way, you will find a good person and request him to help you. He hides you in his place to protect you. When these antisocial elements visit a good person's place and inquire about you, the good person misguides them and redirects them to some other place in order to protect you. This is exactly how deception works. In this analogy, you are the resources to be protected Antisocial elements are the hackers who want to gain access to the resources. And a good person is a deception technique that protects the resources from hackers by making them fall in the trap. Now, this slide explains the basic idea behind deception and how it works. Now, deception is a technique where hackers' methods will be used as security mechanism. So, it is also known as fishing the fishers. So what do you mean by fishing the fishers is, let's understand how phishing works first. So let's assume that there is a, a website of a bank. Okay. So what hackers do is they recreate the user interface of a bank. So which looks like a real website, but in reality, it is not a real website. In, in the backend, they use the interface to collect your data and to carry out further attacks. So this is known as phishing. So on the server side, we are going to use similar techniques to protect our resources. So deception is a military tactic used by both attackers and defenders. So in our case, we are using deception for defending our resources. Now there's a diagram here. It shows how deception works. Now here there are two types of users. One is benign user and second one is malicious user. Both the users are presented with the common user interface. Now based on their activity, they will be classified as benign user or malicious user. If they are classified as benign user, then uh, he will be given to the access to the real system. If the user is classified as malicious user and if he is unauthorized, then he will be redirected to the deceptive system. In deception, there are two types of deception. One is uh, active deception and second one is passive deception. In active deception, inaccurate information is intentionally provided to the hackers to fall for the trap. In passive deception, incomplete information will be provided to the hackers. So what intruders or hackers will try is they try to gain all the information and fall for the other trap. Now, deception can also be classified as a client-side deception and server-side deception. So basically client-side deception is used by hackers. So it is used to deceive the users or people. Then server-side deception is used by security providers. This is used to deceive the hackers. Now, better deception technique is use the combination of active deception and passive deception. That is provide both inaccurate and incomplete information to the hackers. Now, let's understand how deception technology evolved over the years and also its advantages. Now, honeypots were introduced in the year 1998. Honeypots are these small devices which are 
placed in the network so when the attacker tries to access those areas an alert will be sent to the system administrator stating that intruder is trying to access a particular portion of network illegally the next honey nets were introduced in the year 2000 uh, honey nets are nothing but the network of honey pots then honey token were introduced in the year 2003 honey tokens are the small piece of uh, information which is embedded in the real information say for example the database when somebody steals the uh, records they are also stealing this honey token so when this is stolen it sends the message to the system administrator saying that the data has been stolen and how it has been stolen okay, so it helps in investigation of the uh, stealing of the records then in 2012 honeypot 2.0 technology was introduced which is much much advanced compared to the honeypots introduced in the year 1998 then deception technology was introduced in the year 2016 now deception technology has got some advantages one is increased accuracy then next is minimal investment and finally the future ready so it is even applicable to the new technology okay so it works fine with the existing technology but even when we adopt the new technology not much changes are required we can adopt it very easily and quickly then this is the first tool which we are going to discuss today that is web trap web trap is designed to create deceptive web pages to deceive and redirect attackers away from real websites so the deceptive web pages are generated by cloning real websites specifically their login pages so the web trap consists of two tools one is the web cloner and second one is the deceptive web server so what web cloner does is it clones the real websites and creates the deceptive web pages and what deceptive web server does is it serves the cloned web pages and reports it to the syslog when somebody tries to access the cloned web pages so these are the commands which you can use and these are the dependencies which you need to install if you want to work with web track so presently it works fine with uh, ubuntu 18 now to clone uh, any website you need to use webcloner.py file so it takes two parameters one is the output directory and second one is the website url you can also see the example at the bottom of this slide so the first parameter is the wikipedia login page that's the folder and second one is the website url which we want to clone so when cloned the cloned pages will uh, reside in wikipedia login page folder the next is the trap server.py file so this will be used whenever somebody wants somebody tries to access the files from wikipedia login page folder so when he tries to access the file from this folder an alert will be sent to the system administrator and the entry will be made to the syslog server then there's the next tool that is daemon hunter so this is used to create low interaction honeypot servers and their agents plus the managers now daemon hunter allows you to create your own honey net all customized by yourself from ports to protocol handlers that means you can use your own ports you can use your own protocols and it is not compulsory that you should use the same protocol everywhere in the network you can use combination of protocol for example for first honeypot you can use tcp for another honeypot you can use http for third honeypot you can use ftp so it is not mandatory that you should use the same protocol so you can use any protocol anywhere you can use any port number anywhere with respect to daemon hunter then why we developed the deception tool we know that cyberspace is a national asset and due to pandemic uh, it is becoming even more important so now xml is the heart of many mainstream technologies such as web services service oriented architecture cloud computing micro web services or even our uh, mobile applications so these vulnerabilities can be present at various 
levels and at various locations such as operating system network database web server application server application code and xml appliances and whenever new technology is uh, are introduced it comes with uh, new challenges so when i say new challenges old challenges also exist plus some new challenges will also be introduced so to give an example let's consider the example of sql injection so we know that sql injection attacks can be performed on rdbms database now when we replace rdbms with xml file the same uh, kind of attack vector can be used to attack our xml data so in this case it is called as xpath injection not sql injection but the procedure and attack vector remains the same next so what we have done in our project is to secure web services from xpath injection attack using modular recurrent neural networks and what solution we proposed is a modular recurrent neural network architecture to identify and classify a typical behavior in user input once the typical user input is identified the attacker is redirected to fake resources to protect the critical data so now to do this we developed our own input validation technique that is known as count based uh, validation technique which works on the frequency of uh, characters in the user input so how it works we'll discuss it in uh, one of our next slides so to begin with we need to understand how xpath injection works now you can see here this is a xml file which stores the valid data okay so that means legal username and legal password and the account type is stored now below you can find there are two lines one is displayed in uh, blue color and second one is displayed in red color so in this case what happens is if you observe the uh, line which is highlighted in uh, blue color here valid username and password have been used whereas in the uh, last line where it is highlighted in red color you can see that some unusual uh, strings have been used which uh, has boolean operators and some unwanted strings like equal to so this is nothing but the attack vector so that's why this is a malicious query and this is how xpath injection attacks are performed now why xpath injection or sql injection is very dangerous is you can see here there are two parameters one is the attacker skill and second one is the typical likelihood of exploit so attacker skills required are very low that means any beginner or a script kitty will be able to uh, form the attack vector and typical likelihood of exploit is very high so what we had done is we had referred some uh, research papers uh, to see whether uh, any similar work has been done so we found that no similar work was done and we also wanted to uh, ensure that the method which we are, are using that is the modular neural network uh, has given uh, positive results and in our survey we found that modular neural network is giving the positive results with respect to the response time so neural network approach to identify and classify a typical behavior input was not used earlier so the study showed different approaches to handle xpath injection attacks it also showed methods applied and their disadvantages so we can conclude from the study that neural networks are not applied to detect xpath injection attacks and existing results are not promising so in many cases we found that response time was uh, not at all in acceptable range so it was in terms of minutes not in terms of seconds so the study showed how modularity in case of neural networks helps to achieve improved performance modular neural networks have not been applied to cyber security particularly to the detection of sql or xpath injection attacks 
now in this slide you can see uh, it explains the system design so we are basically uh, have three tiers one is the presentation tier then business tier then the data tier so in presentation tier you have the user interface through which user or attacker is going to enter the input if he's a user he will input he will input a valid input if he's a malicious user then he will enter malicious inputs now in business tier the user input will be processed business logic will be written and executed and you can see here our uh, recurrent neural network is hosted at business tier so which does the main job of classification and serves the data whether it is real data or fake data from the data tier so based on the classification the next our uh, third tier is the data tier which stores uh, three kinds of data one is the real xml data then second one is the fake xml data and third one is the custom error messages if we move to our extreme left again you can see that the examples of valid input malicious input and invalid input have been mentioned now the examples of valid inputs are email id mobile number or any alphanumeric word then similarly you can see that some malicious inputs have been mentioned note here that this is just a small uh, example but there's a huge list of malicious input which you can actually construct the next user may or the attacker may also enter the invalid input that is because he wants to fetch the more information maybe he is not getting the information about the system so he will enter some invalid input when he enters the invalid input it is going to generate the error message i note here that many times these error messages also reveal a lot of information say for example which browser the uh, server is using or which server the server is using which operating system the server is using what is the port number so this data may be sufficient or he may use this information to frame the next attack vector so in this case it becomes very important to hide these error messages so in this case custom error messages will come to our rescue and hide the information or hide the system errors now this is the algorithm uh, on which our the entire application is based so this incorporates the count based validation technique now you can see here there is a table 4 that is situated at uh, bottom right corner so where some special characters have been displayed including the alphabets and digits and also the threshold has been mentioned so you can see here uh, number of dots allowed are maximum two whereas alphabets or digits they can be any number of course there is a length limit okay but some special characters like brackets round brackets they are not allowed so it is clearly mentioned that the threshold is zero so similarly based on the threshold value and based on the character the error codes have been assigned now the first step what we are going to do is we are going to scan the user input that is user will enter the input then determine the length of the user input then count the frequency of every character in the user input including alphabets lowercase alphabets uppercase alphabets digits and special characters then check if the frequency of the character is below the threshold value as mentioned in the table 4 so if it is below the threshold value then set the error code to 40 that means it's a valid input else now in the next step check the frequency of special characters if it is above the threshold value then set the code as 4000 okay else set the error code to 400 so that means it is invalid now the next step is to build neural networks so as we have said we are going to or we have built modular neural network that means we are, have not used a single neural network instead we have used multiple neural networks where the output of one neural network becomes the input of another neural network okay 
So you can see here in table one and table two, these two are two different neural networks. So first uh, uh, neural network is trained on number of login attempts. Okay. And second uh, uh, neural network is trained on the error codes. Now to build a recurrent neural network, the configuration we considered is 15 neurons with hidden layer as long shorter memory network and output layer as softmax. Then resilient propagation, this is a back propagation neural network algorithm was used to train the data set. Okay. Uh, then similarly the test data set uh, created in real time was used to validate against the training data set. Then next, if training error and the test error both error of the both the networks are 0.0 percent, then classify the input of classify the input vector based on the outputs of both the neural networks in table three. So we'll see the content of table three in the next slide. So if the input is successfully classified as valid, then serve the data from the real XML file. If it is classified as malicious, then serve the data from the fake XML file. Else, if it is classified as invalid, then return the custom error message, not the system error message. Okay, so you can see here, in the first column, we have the output of neural network one. In the second column, we have the output of neural network two. And third one is the final classification. And note here that if both are valid, then only it is considered as valid. In all the cases, it is either malicious or invalid. If with respect to valid and malicious, if one of them is malicious, then it is considered as malicious. In case of valid and invalid, if one of them is invalid, then it is considered as invalid. In case of invalid and malicious or valid or malicious, it is malicious. Okay. Now to implement, we used uh, uh, PyBrain uh, package to implement the neural network. To implement web services, we used BottlePy micro web framework. And the web server was WSGI reference server of BottlePy and the Apache. Then we used two web browsers to test our user interface. Then scripting language uh, was used Python. The NumPy and Matplotlib libraries were used to draw the graphs. So PyBrain is a modular uh, machine learning library for Python. So Python is short for Python based reinforcement learning, artificial intelligence and neural network library. So do, to download and install PyBrain, you can just follow the uh, URLs given in this slide. And there are very nice tutorials on this uh, site. You can follow it and you can build your own network using PyBrain. The next is the bottle Pi, that's the Python web framework. It is a fast, simple, and lightweight micro web framework for Python. It is distributed as a single file module and has no dependencies other than Python standard library. So this is very, very important. You just need to uh, download the file and start using its modules. So no need to install or configure. So it includes the important features of any web framework. So that is routing, templates, utilities, and server. And it does not depend on any external library since it was based, it was built on the Python standard library. Okay, you just need to download bottle pie and include it in your project directory and start coding it. So this is the URL you can follow for more information. Now these are the results. So that is the you can see a comparison of true positives with respect to modular neural network and single neural network. So to Compare the results we implemented two versions. One is modular neural network version and second was the single neural network version and res results were recorded. And you can see here, the results are more stable with respect to modular neural network where it is unstable with respect to single neural network. Then similarly with respect to false positives, you can observe the similar trend so our model neural network is performing better compared to single neural network. So same with the true negatives and uh, false negatives. Okay. So next is response time. 
so you can also see here when we had used modular neural network so our results are better we are saving time but when we use single neural network it is taking more time so basically the ratio is 1 raised to 1.5 so our modular neural network takes less time that is because uh, the input samples to be trained are less okay in case of single neural network what happens is there will be lots of uh, permutation and combinations of the input so that we can avoid in modular neural network now this is the summary of results so you can observe here uh, we have model neural network and single neural network with outlier and without outlier so in both the cases uh, our model neural network architecture is performing better and giving us the better results now let's have a look at uh, snapshots so you can see here in this slide we have two files one is data.xml which stores the real data and second one is the fake data.xml file which shows the fake data but it looks like the real data so just for our understanding i have added the keyword fake so this is the user interface for our application the next if user enters valid username and a password it says that login successful that means um, he has been granted access to the real system then next in this case you can observe here the attack vectors user has not entered the valid input he has entered the malicious inputs so in this case uh, after four login attempts okay up to three login attempts it will display that login failed but after three login attempts or more than three login attempts it will start disclosing the data but it will be fake data so this gives the false impression to the attacker that he has been successful in uh, uh, gaining access to the system but in reality it's not and also note here that in the bottom right corner we are also fetching the information of a user whoever is trying to access our system so what information is captured here remote port remote address then the method used then the browser used then also the query string used okay and also you can see here the number of login attempts are also recorded okay so when all this combination of input is considered so our system classifies it as uh, uh, malicious and it displays the fake data so you can see here now attacker is going to enter fake data and he will gain access to some system but it is the access to the fake system which looks like a real system so the conclusion is that our solution offers improved security over existing methods by misleading the attacker to false resources and customer pages our results also show that the system accepts legitimate input although the user input may contain some special characters and rejects only truly malicious inputs so our solution combines modular neural networks and count based validation approach to filter the malicious input so it has also resulted in increased average detection rate of true positives and true negatives and decreased average detection rate of false positives and false negatives then the security systems have to be successful every time but attacker has to be successful only once so this is an this is a very very important statement so through deception i can say that we are not providing 100% security instead we are buying extra time to protect our resources from the hackers so these are the references you can refer for more information and more concepts Thank you.